During that time of the year when we all just get bombarded with AAA titles comes along Killing Floor 2, a fun little indie game developed by Tripwire Interactive that's the sequel to Killing Floor, a predecessor that shares a lot of similarities as you'd probably expect. Killing Floor 2 could best be summed up as zombies with microtransactions. It's a primarily co-op experience where you and up to five other players take on waves and waves of different zombie types across 12 official maps and god knows how many custom maps. It's proof that early access can actually work when it's not put in the hands of numbnuts looking to make a quick buck, and Killing Floor 2 is an enjoyable game, despite being utterly repetitive and at times punishing as all hell. Now let's get this out of the way first, this is just a gorgeous looking and sounding game on every level. The whole thing runs like grease lightning and the amount of gore in the game is really over the top but in the best possible way with a really well implemented physics engine. Over time maps will be permanently stained by blood and it's not uncommon to see whole areas covered in a familiar shade of red. The game's also got a real dark sense of humour with the various characters uttering lots of great one-liners over whichever heavy metal track happens to be playing at the time. It just can't be faulted in terms of presentation and it passes in that regard with flying colours. Now there is a story in this game, not that it matters all that much or has ever really divulged that much in game. The whole thing takes place in Europe after the events of the first game as a bunch of civilians and mercenary types band together to exterminate the zombies or Zeds as they're referred to across a bunch of different environments some of which are based off real-world locations like Paris and Italy. Regardless of the map you choose, the gameplay is going to always be the same, difficulty depending. There's either going to be 4, 8 or 10 waves, with each wave introducing more zombies and increasingly difficult zombie types. So at first you'll be killing basic enemy types like the Slashers and Crawlers, which are basically just cannon fodder that can be killed by most weapons and whose heads explode if you so much as even aim your weapon in their general direction. But as the waves go on and on it becomes a bit more complicated and Z-types get introduced that can really ruin your day. Scrakes for instance are big assholes with a chainsaw that go into this kind of rage mode when their health is reduced to a certain point, wrecking all kinds of shit for anyone unfortunate enough to get in their way. Husks are guys with a powerful cannon that shoots out fireballs and being one of the only ranged enemy types in the game they can be a real nuisance if not taken care of quickly. And then lastly there's my personal favourite, the Flesh Pounds, which do exactly what they sound like. Similar to the Scrakes, these things get pissed off then start running around at full tilt, pounding the flesh of whichever player happens to be the closest, which is usually me. Anyway, when you're playing on high difficulty at max players, it becomes sheer lunacy, with the game frequently going into slow motion, or Z time as it's known in game, allowing you to appreciate the amazing amount of gore on offer and also line up headshots on nearby enemies for an easy kill, which is always satisfying. On top of that, each map will end with a boss fight, either the Patriarch, a minigun and rocket launcher wielding prick that also happens to be able to cloak, or Dr. Hans Volta, a German scientist with twin STG-44 rifles and gas grenades. I could make a joke about him being German and using gas grenades, but yeah, I won't. This is it! This is it. Fucking die. Part of what makes or breaks certain maps is the people you play with and the perks you choose. I should clarify, perks are basically the classes of the game. Now you're able to choose from a bunch of different character models and customise the hell out of them with countless cosmetic additions that literally don't change the gameplay in the slightest, but the perks themselves are what really separates players apart. I'm not going to waste your time going over all of them, but generally they're kind of what you'd expect anyway. I mean, you've got basic sort of DPS classes that just deal lots of damage, you've got a medic class, you've got a support class that replenishes your ammo pool, and a melee class that runs around smacking zombies with a shovel and katana. Each class starts off with a basic lineup of weapons, and as you complete each wave and kill more and more zombies, you earn DOSH, which is spent on new guns, armor, grenades, and all that kind of stuff. There's weapons that are specific to each perk, though you still can use any weapon you want, it just means that the experience gained from kills won't be going to the perk you're currently playing as. Now I guess what could be conceived as a somewhat negative point, to know the ins and outs of each perk, or just to play a perk effectively, you really need to spend a lot of time with them before they become viable. But this can take a really long time. I mean, as an example, I've played the game for close to 20 hours now, focusing on only two perks mainly, the SWAT and the Commando, and I still haven't reached max level for either of them. It's good in the sense that you're getting a lot of value out of the game, I mean, considering there's 10 perks in total, that's a whole heap of time it's going to take to max them all out. But perks aside, you're going to be doing largely the same thing regardless of who you're playing as, and your enjoyment factor is really going to depend on whether or not that particular perk gels with your personal preference for how you like to play an FPS game. 
Each five levels you get a new perk talent, which can greatly improve that perk's basic abilities, like reloading weapon times, total damage and all that kind of stuff. And yet, it may be true that when you reach these levels, these new talents may affect your enjoyment for a perk that otherwise you're not enjoying, but do you really want to grind it out for 10 hours just to find out? For me, I enjoyed the SWAT and Commando perk because they played like traditional FPS characters. They use assault rifles that are easy to get the hang of and they just feel fun to play as. But switching to a perk like the Firebug or the Berserker, which are more reliant on very specialized weapon types, and the game takes on a whole different feeling. I mean, check out some footage from a level 25 Berserker and you'll see what I mean. Like fuck boys out there? Trying to talk shit against me? As a result, I know I'll probably never bring myself to leveling those characters to max level because I just don't find them all that enjoyable. I guess my point is that whilst there is a lot of content on the surface, that content might not be all encompassing and chances are all of the perks aren't really going to be your cup of tea. Is that a bad thing? Well, no, not at all, but I'm just trying to make people aware of this kind of almost faux longevity, if that makes sense. There are certain other things I'd like to complain about. I mean, I'd like to complain about how annoying it is when you get boxed in by a group of zombies. I'd like to complain about how much damage the Patriarch's rocket launcher does, and I'd like to complain about how I barely have any ammo left by the end of a wave. But a lot of my complaints can also be fixed by just getting good at the game. I think the only real objective fault of the game is its repetition, but this comes down to the type of game of playing it. For me, it does kind of get a bit old, but I did spend a lot of time playing with friends, which made it considerably more fun. I would think that playing alone would detract from a lot of the enjoyment you could have and make it feel a lot more grindy. Not to mention with pickup groups online, you can often be playing with people who it seems the concept of teamwork has never once entered their heads. I can also see how some people would take issues with the microtransactions, but as I said before, they're entirely cosmetic and everything you need to play the game properly is given to you right from the get-go. So would I recommend Killing Floor 2? Well, ultimately, yes I would. If you're looking for a game to sink some serious hours into and don't get your panties in a twist over cosmetic microtransactions, then it's definitely worth checking out. With or without friends to play with, it's still a violently good game, and even if you're not a fan of the first game, there's a lot to enjoy here. Fuck, I sent him flying, eh? <laughs>